Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be pouring a concrete patio over existing concrete. So I'm going to show you just how that's done and how we do it. We've got a lot of concrete we're pouring on this job. So on this particular concrete patio, there was an existing concrete base already that was really old. And we're going to go over it with four inches of concrete. So like I said, we got a lot of concrete we're pouring on this job. So come on back check it out and make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed yet there's another patio here we're pouring over existing concrete so if you're looking to do that then this is definitely the channel to be on we got a, a patio here on the side of the garage we're pouring on this job and then we got an apron a concrete apron out in front of the garage we're pouring so make sure you hit subscribe so you can come on back hit the little bell notification so you'll know when all these videos come out but for this particular video, I'm going to just show you how we pour a basic concrete patio over existing concrete. Now we're going over it with about four inches of concrete. So when we do that, there's really no special prep that we need to do to the old concrete because it's not much different than really just pouring over a gravel base at this point. You know, as long as the as long as the old concrete is stable and sound. Um, you're pretty much just good to go just to pour over it at this thickness. Now, if we go thinner, like if we go three inches thick or less, so three, two and a half, two inches over a concrete patio like this, then I'm going to bond it to the existing one. I'm going to pressure wash it and clean it. I'm going to use a product called Weldcrete as my bonding agent and brush that on the old concrete before I pour. And then I'll pour right over that bonding agent and both slabs will then be bonded together. But in this case, if you have enough height to raise it up four inches, then you're just fine with just pouring right over it the way it is like this. So as you can see to the right there, we already did a concrete ramp going into that garage door and that was over an existing concrete slab also. So. I'll have that video linked at the end of this one, so after you get done watching this video, you can check that one out. But right now, the prep for this was just clean it off, put down the wire mesh, and then basically put up our ISO strip around the outside perimeter, form it, and then pour it the concrete like we're doing here. So we're using a 4000 PSI concrete. I got fiber mesh in it too, and we got wire mesh down there I'm pulling up. As I, as I run the chute, you can see I'm pulling it up with a come along. And we're going to just pour this concrete out. Now we live in Maine, so we always use 4,000 PSI concrete because we have a, you know, about three months of winter here. And we put air entrainment in the concrete too. And what the air entrainment does is they basically, when they batch the concrete out, they, they inject these little tiny microscopic air bubbles in the concrete. And what that does is it allows water to be absorbed into the concrete after it's hardened. And it gives that water room to expand in there when it freezes. So it helps prevent, you know, the surface popping and scaling and peeling off in the winter months. And that's what air entrainment does. Now, if you don't live in an area where you have winters, freeze-thaw cycles like we do, then you don't really need air entrainment in your concrete. It doesn't really affect us as far as finishing or anything like that. You don't even really notice it's in there. So it's it's really not too big a deal as far as pouring and finishing the concrete. So once we get most of this slab poured out, this was about a, a 18 by 16 foot area right here. We get the edges are going to get magged right to the top of that ISO strip foam we put up. Now we put the ISO foam up so these two slabs and the, the foundation, this new slab wouldn't bond to, to either one just in case there was any movement. You know, we don't want the two slabs bonding to each other, otherwise it's going to break the edges all up. So we put the ISO strip in there to, to help prevent that and give the slab room to expand and contract. And just help, that'll help prevent any future cracking hopefully in this slab. As you can see, me and Eric, we're getting our edges all magged. Darren's going to jump in there and, and get that, that wall up by the building mag. And then we can get the screed in this thing. But th these are the basic steps. You know, order your concrete, 
get it poured out depending on how experienced you are you know you might not want to pour the whole thing out like we did at once you could pour half of it out get it screeded then do the other half but this really wasn't a very big slab so for most of you you know you're going to be able to pour this thing right out if you're thinking of doing it yourself I'm just checking my edge there making sure everything's good and flat this slopes away from the building about two inches so we're actually screeding it kind of downhill if you want to call it that a couple inches and Eric's screeding right off the top of the form over there on the left and Darren's kick screeding off that wet pad that we that we magged so he's being really careful that he's he's scoring with the screed every time he drags it across the surface to make sure he's nice and nice and level with the surface and then you know I'm raking the concrete and you can see we got it a little bit high in there so I'm really raking a bunch back but we didn't pour it we didn't pour it all completely out so we have a little bit of room to pull this excess concrete back without having to shovel it out now Darren's kick screen so as he pulls the screed back he's kind of filling his foot tracks in a little bit now because the concrete's so high he didn't have to kick very much in there it just kind of fell in there but that's the basics of screeding the concrete we're using a 14 foot magnesium screed for that I'll have all these tools down in the description too guys below if you want to check them out so once we get it screeded we we jump right on bull float it. and the bull float is very important what it does is it pushes down the rocks brings up the cream and the paste and gives you a surface that's a lot easier to finish than if you just left it screeded you know when you screed it it's pretty rough there's still a lot of aggregate on the surface so that bull float is going to smooth it right off and give you a nice smooth finish so when you come back to finish this thing we're going to put a broom finish on it so and we're going to mag float it out first so that's going to make that part of the process a lot easier if you can you see how eric's kind of bull floating across the way we screeded it like like perpendicular to how we screeded it that's going to help level out your surface a little bit better if you can do it that way i mean sometimes there's not room to do it that way but when you can that's usually the more 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 correct way to bull float is right across the way your screed is and that'll flatten out any little dips and humps you have in there and if you do have some in there you know you should be able to level them out with the bull float you could always if you have a big dip in there you know the bull float's going to show that and you could throw some concrete back in there with a shovel or just use your mag and just kind of flick some concrete back in that low spot and then bull float right over it we've been screeding together so long we we typically don't have any any dips or humps in it or anything like that when we screed so we can kind of screed you know he's going east to west right now we could screed this way we could screed north to south and so here we are we're getting it's this is probably about 45 minutes after we got done pouring it. it was pretty hot here the sun was beating right down so the concrete was setting up pretty good you can see there in the background we had a bunch of other concrete we poured here today too so like I said make sure you subscribe come back and see the videos for that part of that is concrete over concrete and part of that is just new concrete slab so we'll show you that in, a, in another video so Darren's just getting the surface magged out and the reason we mag the surface out first before we broom is you know we want to make sure there's no imperfections in the surface as far as little rock holes or even bull float lines you know that bull float will leave some lines in the surface sometimes or any dips or humps and we want to bring up even a finer paste to put the broom finish on so we'll mag float it out sometimes we'll mag float it out a couple times if it's if the first time we do it it seems just a little too too wet but this one was drying pretty fast so it all it took was just this this single mag over the surface and it gave us a nice textured broom finish for this we're using a three foot wide broom today on this and you can get these brooms i mean you can get them on amazon i got them down in the description below you could get them at your local concrete supply store if they have them there. I think they even have them at Home Depot and Lowe's, these, these concrete finishing brooms. They work, they work really good. In between, you know, every time he pulls that broom over it, 
he can usually get either one or two passes before those those bristles kind of fill up with the paste of the concrete. So we like to just dump it in a soak it in a five gallon bucket real quick. That's what he's doing when he when he pulls that back. So he's cleaning off those bristles with some water and then he's banging the water out of the bristles and then he's pulling it back over the concrete again. That makes sure that you get just a nice clean broom finish on your concrete. If you don't clean the paste out of there, then as you go, the the texture gets, it changes a little bit. And sometimes you'll even leave some concrete paste behind, like it'll just fall out from under the bristles and leave it on the surface. And that doesn't really look too good either. So as Eric's pulling the broom across, I'm running that little edger along the edge to finish off the edge. And we're gonna leave that edger mark in there. So that rounds off the edge really nice. It helps strengthen the edge a little bit. And it gives it kind of a picture frame look. Yeah, you can see I got my edge <laughs> a little too far into his path. Luckily it was right on the edge, so it didn't really bother the, the broom mark any. So I'll just finish edging that off. See Darren's taking his skids. He's gonna go back to that, that other slab we poured and start magging that out. So make sure you hang out for that. And uh, anyway guys, that's how we pour concrete over concrete. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Hey, for those of you who wanna learn how to do concrete like we do, the link down below for the Concrete Underground will get you to where you want to be. You'll learn how to pour and finish concrete, how to stamp, how to grow a business. Everything that we do with concrete, I'm going to teach you inside the Concrete Underground, guys. So check that out.